I oh. Welcome to the Holistic Kids Show. My name is Zane. My name is Abdullah. And my name is Imad. We're the Holistic Kids here to educate and us kids from the inside out. We know that there is so much that could be affecting our health. On this show, we have talked about food, stress, sleep, but we haven't talked about light. What light affects our health? How does light affect our health? We just learned about light at the planetarium yesterday. Huh. And today, we have the perfect guest with us to, to, uh, to talk about just that. Dr. Catherine Clinton, MD, is a licensed neuropathic physician with a focus on gut health, autoimmunity, and psychoneuroimmunology. A respected author, speaker, pediatric health advocate, Dr. Catherine practices in Oregon. When in medical school, Dr. Catherine was diagnosed and healed from an autoimmune disease that affects the gastrointestinal tract, leaving her with a passion to prevent autoimmunity in children everywhere. Dr. Catherine addresses the, new, the psychoneuroimmune system and gut health of children and families through a deeper connection with the world around us. Dr. Catherine is passionate about the connections we have with the world around us and how these connections can regenerate our health and the health of our planet. She sees an urgent need for healing our internal terrain as well as he, uh, as well as healing the terrain of the world we live in. We are so honored for you to be here with us. Um, well, I am just thrilled to be here with you guys. Thanks for having me on today. It's our pleasure. It's our, it's our pleasure. pleasure. <laughs> and just to say, you have such an impressive bio. We would love to know your story. Absolutely. Well, I got really interested in natural health when I was maybe around your age. I started doing uh, martial arts when I was in third grade. And uh, I don't know if you guys know who Bruce Lee is, but Bruce Lee was a famous martial artist and he used lots of different natural remedies. So that got me thinking about the power of natural remedies and food and herbs. And then I assisted with a midwife for a little bit. Um, and I knew that I wasn't cut out to be a midwife because those amazing people are just up at all hours helping those <laughs> babies be born. And I need my sleep. So I decided to go to naturopathic medical school and I got really sick there. I was diagnosed with um, a couple autoimmune conditions. And that's where your body gets all confused and <clears throat> starts damaging parts of your body because it's so chaotic in there. It's kind of like, have you guys ever been to a music concert where the music is just so loud, you can't even talk to anybody or the, the show is so loud, you can't even talk to the person next to you? Yes. That, yeah, that's kind of what an autoimmune reaction is, just like chaos. And so I got really sick. I was diagnosed with Lyme disease as well as parasites, all kinds of stuff. But I was in medical school, so I was in the right place to get better. And that's uh, what I did. I got better and learned to help my patients and really learned the power of our thoughts and light and uh, the rhythm of the seasons and how all those things impact our health. And here I am now. That is amazing. 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 Now let's address the light in, in the room. How can light affect our health? It's just light. Right? That's what I used to think too. It's just light. But there's such a huge spectrum of light. And, you know, it's only been about 150 years, even less than that, that we've had artificial light. We really, as humans, have been living under the light of the sun and the moon for millennia. 
So our bodies are really set up for that information. And so the light we get from these screens we're in front of and like some of our overhead lighting is so foreign to our bodies. So it's really important the kind of light we're getting because one really boosts our health, boosts our immune system, boosts our energy, boosts our mood and our creativity, while the other light depresses our immune system. It makes it harder for our mitochondria to make energy. Um, so it's, it's really, really amazing what light can do. How does the natural light affect us? Because we know that the sun's light, right? It, it gives us vitamins, right? But is there anything else that natural light can do? Absolutely. I'm so glad you asked. So when we talk about the sun, that's where everybody goes, right? Vitamin D. It helps our body convert vitamin D. And we know that vitamin D is so important for so many things, for our brain health, for our immune health, our mood, all of that stuff. But what we don't hear about is what else that light is doing. So they did a really neat research study where they looked at sunlight and it was actually taking our immune cells. So you guys know those cells in our body that um, deal with microbes, bacteria, yeast, um, or any kind of foreign particle. That's our immune system. It is constantly going through our body being like, is this little particle friendly? Is this cell healthy? And that's our immune system. And so when we get natural light from the sun, we, they did a research study showing that sunlight actually makes those cells work faster. They travel faster. They communicate faster. So not only is sunlight giving us vitamin D, it's also making our cells communicate really efficiently, really quickly. And that is really important. Now, you guys want to know about the different kinds of natural sunlight we can get in the day? Well, I'll tell you about them. <laughs> so there are all kinds of different spectrums of light. So light in the morning when we can go out and get a little bit of sun in our eyes, on our skin, it releases dopamine and serotonin that make us happy and energized throughout the day. Same with sun in the middle of the day. When the sun goes down at night, if we can lower our lights, if we can turn off some of those bright overheads, use something like the salt uh, light candle or more red, more orange, warmer tones of light, lower lights, what that does is it tells our body to make us ready for sleep. It gets us ready for sleep so that we can clean out all of the things we need to clean out, all of those cells that aren't working right, all of that stuff we need to get rid of. It prepares us for that. It dumps that melatonin so we can have a really good sleep and we can also repair and have that growth hormone, that hormone that makes us grow. So if we can get natural light, in the morning and in the day, and then lower those lights at night. So we are following that rhythm of the sun. It's like our body does a big exhale, like, ah, okay, you are in the right spot. You are doing it at the right time. I know where you are. I know it's okay. Versus if the sun goes down and we're on our screens until right before bed, our body thinks it's the middle of the day and it thinks, why are you going to bed right now? It's time to be active. It's time to be creative. And your body really needs that message that it's time to go to sleep so that it can do all the things it does when you're asleep. Did you guys know that that hormone to make you grow is released at night? That's when we grow. Isn't that interesting? Uh, 
Oh, I it cut out a little bit. Can you can you ask me again? What? Is lag. Oh. Is that better? Um I think about the on that way to think our dad is coming to fix it. Well, I will tell you guys something while we were waiting for them to come back. I was just reading a research article from this year, just a couple months ago, showing that just one hour of bright light affects our sleep. I was just randomly talking. <laughs> oh, okay. We were like, you can do this on here. <laughs> Yeah, so I was I was just talking about the importance of, you know, keeping that rhythm with the sun. And when the sun goes down, that's when our body gets that message. And I think it's so interesting that that's when we grow is when we're sleeping. I mean, I think of sleep as being pretty inactive. I'm just laying there. But it turns out that's when we grow and we don't grow as well or as efficiently if we don't have that natural light and kind of follow uh, the sun. Yeah, remember, sleep should not be taken lightly. It's so important. Oh, lightly. <laughs> so important. <laughs> so important. Yep, absolutely. And you know, I was just, uh, while you guys stepped out for a second, I was telling people about a study that I read just from the last month or two showing that just one hour, just one hour of bright light from screens, from TV, from an iPad, it decreases that melatonin, that thing that makes us sleep and get ready to repair and grow, it decreases it by 90%. That's so huge. And that is just an example of what light can do. And so if we can get wrap our heads around this and get more kids outside in natural light and off those screens, what a world of difference that would make. That is really cool. How much time do we need, do we need in sunlight to get these benefits? Well, we want to always make sure that we're not spending too much time and getting a sunburn, right? Um, so we want to make sure that we get out of the sun before that happens. But let me tell you guys, even if I'm sitting in the shade, not in the direct sun, I'm still getting those benefits because we have a little thing in our body, a little protein. It's microscopic. So we have to look uh, under a microscope, but we have a teeny little protein called opsin and opsin helps us collect sunlight and we have opsin in our eyes, but we also have it on our skin. So just sitting in the shade lets natural light get in our eyes, get in our skin. And it really doesn't have to be that long if we can go with the sun. So if I get 10 minutes of morning sun, if I get a half an hour of midday sun, and if I get catch that sunset and lower the lights, that's less than an hour, which I would always say more time outside the better. But even something as little as that, um, having a cup of morning tea outside, so amazing. That is amazing. And amazing. Amazing. 
And you talked <laughs> about melatonin. Uh, what is that exactly? Melatonin is a hormone that our body secretes in response to the light. So melatonin is, it has this uh, neat relationship that when we get that morning sun, we get a big dumping of serotonin that gets turned into melatonin. And melatonin helps us sleep and helps us have a fast working immune system. It also helps us have a great night's sleep so that we can repair and get and grow and do everything we need to. Yeah, that is, it's really important to grow. Otherwise, it'll be pretty short. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to be short. I don't want to be short. <laughs> Just, Ahmad, you'll become big one day. <laughs> and <laughs> children and teens are spending more time on screens than ever before because, um, because of all of the uh, phones, iPads, computers, right? All of this the EMF um, radiation that's coming off of those screens because of the blue light. How can we get kids to use less screens and more sunlight? Great question. I think that it starts really as a community effort, as a family effort. So taking our play dates outside, meeting, um, people outside in nature as a community is a great way to start. You know something that's really easy? We all have to eat <laughs> to live, right? So if we could make one meal, uh, an outdoor meal, that adds such a huge amount of outdoor time that we're not even really thinking about. It's not hiking, it's not you know going out and being in nature, so to speak, but it is. Um, and it's an amazing way to really get that light in. Maybe eating breakfast as a family outside, eating a snack outside. Um, I'm forever telling my kids that it's time for us to go outside, especially after being on those screens. You know, do you guys ever watch TV or play games and do it for long enough that your brain kind of feels foggy and yeah. kind of once. Yeah. Once you guys are good. Yeah. So that that can happen if you have too much screen time. And a great way to get rid of that foggy feeling, that weird feeling, is to go outside. So follow every screen time with outside time and try to make it fun and work for your family. Is eating outside an option for your family or our hikes, maybe an after dinner stroll where you watch the sunset and come inside. I love to um, set rituals with my kids throughout the day. We have a morning walk that we do um, almost daily. And the lowering of the lights at night, that's all them. Uh, they go around and lower the lights and turn on different lights, kind of set the mood for the evening. And it's really a family affair. Yeah, a lot of grown-ups are stuck at work. And on their phones, because yeah, so like, a lot of work is on the screens. Yeah, so right? how are we supposed to convince all these adults to go outside and have fun? Yeah, because kids are not the only ones using it. It's also the adults. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And to letting those adults know the importance of that light and acting as... You know, it's not just kids. It's really, really important in our kids because that light, it not only sets up all those things we were talking about, it actually patterns your metabolism for later in life. And that's what so many adults are working with. They're working with feeling low energy, uh, kind of cranky and moody. And so encouraging those grown-ups to come outside too, showing them the importance of it. And what I say to my patients, you guys, is I challenge all my patients to try it for a week, to get morning sun for a week. So I would challenge the grown-ups to do the same thing. 
try getting outside before 10 a.m. and getting that morning sunlight and try it for a week. If you can do it at the same time as putting your feet in grass, well, that's like a bonus. And after that week, I've never, ever had anyone say they didn't feel a difference. Everyone comes back feeling different. And so once we can have people experience that health, experience that energy from light, then I think it'll be much easier to get everybody outside. Yeah, and you touched on the effects of blue light. Why, why else is blue light so bad for kids? I mean, it's only light, right? That's true, but it is so foreign to our biology that light really, uh, non-native light is what we call it, right? So light from our screens, these blue lights that we have all around, they do a bunch of different stuff. Have you guys heard of mitochondria? Yes. Yes. So our mitochondria are really what, they're teeny, teeny little organelles that power our whole body, right? And they do that by transferring electrons on a chain. And they're little protons that transfer, I mean, proteins, sorry. There's little proteins that help transfer those electrons. Those proteins actually get further away when we are exposed to blue light so that when we are kids and we are developing and growing, we need that energy from our mitochondria for development, for growth, for um, neuroplasticity, for all of those things, for our brain health. And so when we are looking at blue light all the time, it's actually making it harder for our mitochondria to make energy as well as inhibiting those natural things that we talked about, like melatonin and our sleep cycle and inflammation. So blue light is really setting us up for so many things. And, you know, it was just a couple months ago, it was in this year, 2022, that they did a study showing that blue light in kids affects their metabolism and their energy for a lifetime. So those patterns we have in early life really kind of get set. And so it's really important that we are tending to our light intake. Yeah, that makes a little bit more sense. Yeah. <laughs> so we have seen studies that constant overexposure to screen time or blue light, especially at night, can disrupt sleep, lead to learning problems, increased body mass, depression, and even suicide. Because of all the social media and basically the internet. So have you seen that in your practice? Absolutely. And I think, you know, it's maybe a combination of things. Because that blue light and those screens come with isolation, right? We aren't, um, we are solo on a screen, right? We're like two people next to each other, each looking at a screen. So there's so many different things that are happening with our mental health around screens um, because there's, that activity is so engaging and it's meant to hit that dopamine button and be really addictive, meaning that it's hard to put it down. And they made it hard to put it down because that's what the software is supposed to do, right? So it's, it's like you said, it's not only an issue with children, it's really addicting for adults too. And that affects our, our psychology, our mood, and how happy you feel. And that comes from those hormones like dopamine and serotonin, but it also comes from just being isolated and on a screen and not, not connecting with, with plants, with other kids, with other humans, with uh, animals. All of those things can bring us such joy. And when we're just sitting in front of a screen that's made to kind of be addicting, 
we forget about those relationships. And once we can kind of rekindle those relationships, it's like coming home, right? It feels really, really good. So that is so empowering to know. It is definitely hard. So educating so is, is definitely hard. So edu educating kids and adults about this topic is so important. And what is one thing kids can do today to improve their health? Excellent question. And I think one of the answers is tending to our light, right? Making sure that we are getting outside and getting our eyes and our skin in the light. So you guys, I live here in Oregon. And so our sunshine looks gray. Like if I turn the camera right now, it's light outside, but the sky is all gray. We don't see the sun. But that natural light has all that magic in it. So if kids out there can understand that going outside in the morning is charging your battery for the day and for a lifetime. So that would be my easy, simple step. Drink your morning tea or your smoothie or whatever you're doing in the morning. Take five or ten minutes and do it outside in the natural sunlight. Also, you talked about how when you go outside, it's like it makes you happier. But what haven't? What, what about when it rains? Yeah, because when when it Does rains, people still, say still sad. Yeah. So and still keep you happy or it does and so if we avoid the rain and we stay inside then we can we can get sad right if there are gray skies outside for months and rain that's where i live <laughs> then if we never go outside it does get sad and depressing but rain you guys have rain has these things called negative ions these little um, particles and these particles go directly into us and they help charge us up. So the answer is going outside. <laughs> even if it's raining, even if it's snowy, whatever that weather is, it's giving your body information just like that light. So my advice would be if it is rainy outside, put a jacket on and go get some of those negative ions because they will help you feel better. They've been shown to boost our mood, to boost happiness, and to increase health with our immune system and brain health and all of that stuff as well. So yeah, we love to have our music outside. Only when it's sunny though, not when it's <laughs> raining. Otherwise, mm -hmm. our food's gonna be pretty wet. Yeah. 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 There's only some things you want to do outside, right? Yeah. <laughs> Reading a book in the rain might not be what you want to do, but a quick walk, a ten, that 10 minutes of, of sun in the morning, even if it's raining, you will get all those benefits and more because you have those negative ions from the rain. It's like walking on a ocean beach, you know, that kind of spray and smell that's, those negative ions going directly into your body and just charging it up like a battery. Thank you so much for your time and wisdom. Where can people learn more about you and your work? You can find me at Dr. Kathleen Clinton um, on my website, on social media. And yep, I'm always talking about light and health. And I just want to thank you guys. I think what you are doing is amazing. So keep doing it. I love it. That was so awesome, everyone. Make sure to follow Dr. Clinton on social media. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much. I love what you guys are doing, and I hope you keep doing it because this is what the world needs. It's Thank you. Pleasure. It's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. So let's recap Dr. Clinton's key points. 
10 to your light. Children and teens are spending more time on screens than ever before, and children's eyes are more, much more sensitive to blue light, as it's not natural, as their eyes are not fully developed as well. Constant overexposure to screen time, blue light, expo uh, and especially at night, can disrupt sleep and lead to learning problems, increased body mass, depression, and even suicide and can affect their metabolism that can affect a lifetime. One hour of artificial light before bed decreases melatonin production in children up to 90%. That's a lot of percentage. So much more than, that's much more than in adults. So we need to tend to our light and natural light is very beneficial for our body. Like how the sun gives us vitamin D. Try to get your family to incorporate more light. Take your playdates outside. And try to get morning sun for a week. Um, because parents need to also get off their phones uh, once in a while. Go and enjoy the, the outside. Wake up to natural sunlight and spend some time outdoors. When you wake up and have your children play outdoors when possible yeah take them to the park um take them on a bike ride anything that will get the vitamin d from the sun and basically lower uh the effects of blue light the sun helps balance hormones like melatonin which helps us fall asleep regulate stress and other hormones so if you're having trouble falling asleep don't go on TikTok or social media because that's not going to help. <laughs> no. Follow every screen time with outdoor time so they cancel each other out. Follow every screen time with them. With, oh. Yeah. Imad? My favorite is to build a garden. Yes. Mm. We love fruits. They're very sweet. I do. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. awesome. Mango. He likes mango, but you can't plant. You can't have a. You can't make uh, plant mangoes in Illinois. <laughs> we don't have enough sun for that here. <laughs> That's not work. And build a fire. We love to hug a tree and go on a hike. Cause remember, trees need fun. trees are living as well. They need friends. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the easiest thing to do. Uh, is make one meal an outdoor meal because outdoor meals are always more enjoyable when you have, when you're sitting in the grass or you can see the sun, you know, there's birds everywhere. It's like very natural to yeah. eat outside as well. And if it's nighttime, then like we have like- um, We like to have campfires. Yeah, yeah, campfires. Yeah. And then we just eat next to it. Yeah, it's really fun. So thank you so much again. Thank you for your patience with our technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> it was my pleasure. Such an honor to be here. Thank you, guys. It's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Until next time, I'm Zanzari. I'm Abdullah. And I'm Imad. Follow my family and I on social media, Holistic Mom D, and look out for my mom's work, The Holistic Arts, your guide to healing chronic inflammation and disease. And the holistic arts work with parenting healthy brains and bodies in a changing world. And the amazing children's book we wrote together called Adam's Healing Adventures and the Power of Rainbow Kids. So check it out on Amazon. Yay! <laughs> we have a special gift for everyone listening. Because it's almost at our two year mark, we want to give you all our special dessert cookbook. We know most kids love sweets, so we put our favorite recipes just for you. Check it out on the description of this podcast. Where wherever. it is. Kids need to learn from other kids. Kids need to learn from other kids. Please download our podcast on iTunes and leave a review so other kids and families can benefit. We need to work together to create a healthier future for all of us and the planet. Join us next week for another episode of the Holistic Kids Show, where kids are empowering kids. Thank, Thank you, everyone. everyone.